welcome to this edition of Ministries in Focus. The St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service brings to you an interview with Honorable Marcella Leibert, who is the Minister responsible for social services, community development, culture, gender affairs, and ecclesiastical affairs. We are going to focus on one particular area, that is, the Ministry of Health. Do sit back and get updated on the latest happenings in the Ministry of Health. We are going to go directly into one of your major areas, and that is the Ministry of Health. I would say that the most critical area in health now has to do with health costs. As you know, this is a worldwide problem. Health costs are escalating, and so it becomes after a while it's unsustainable and so you have to look to how you want to address this because providing the best quality service for our citizens is what is dearest to our heart. We want to be able to provide the highest and best quality healthcare service for our citizens. And so over the past two years or so, we have been focusing and certainly within the last year on health insurance because we believe this is the only way to go to cover health costs. And so we have been going through this. We have had consultants come in. We have the data being produced as to health costs in the public and the private sector. And also in terms of numbers, percentage of the population that are currently covered by ins health insurance and those who are not. And so out of all this data, we've come with a strategy which is well advanced. First, we look to the public service because the government, as you know, employs most of the workers in the Federation. And so there was a health insurance, as you may be aware, for public servants that was upgraded. And as of 1st August 2012, there is now a new health insurance policy for government workers. So that took care of about 5,000 persons mm. because we are talking about civil servants as well as what was originally called non-establishment workers. Anybody who is working for the government would come under this health insurance policy. Some of the features which I think we need to highlight because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really a, a very, very good policy. Whereas once ago under the old system, when you reach retirement age, which is like 55, or if you retired at 56 or whatever age, your health policy, your health insurance policy came to an end. As you know, the older we get, the more you need the coverage. So that was going in the opposite direction, really. Yes. And so we are now pleased to say that this new policy goes up to the age of 75. So even when you are retired from the service, you're still, you still continue to be covered by this health insurance policy up to the age of 75. So that's one of the new features in it. Mm -hmm. Also, the old policy did not cover dental, it did not cover eyes, it did not cover mental illness, it did not cover HIV, but now all of these are included because we believe there should be no discrimination. And so all of these are included in the health policy. It also covers air ambulance service for all of the persons working in the government service. If you have to go overseas, your air ambulance service is covered under this new policy that started on the 1st of August 2012. I think there was also some mention about beneficiaries as well. Yes, but before mm. we get to the beneficiaries, I also want to mention the fact that what they call catastrophic illnesses, which include things like being diagnosed with cancer, before you got $250,000 as a limit, say if you're diagnosed with cancer. Now it's $750,000 for three years, yeah, where it was a one-shot payment mm -hmm. for the 250000 Now it's 750000 for three years. Mm -hmm. So after that three years, it will start again. So I think that the, all of these improvements would be down to the benefit of 
the persons working for the government and certainly towards their health benefits. Mm -hmm. You mentioned dependence. That is being negotiated at the moment. They have agreed that your dependence can come under the scheme. Of course, you'll have to pay a small fee for the dependence, but that is being negotiated in terms of how much you would pay. But the fact of having dependence, that is already agreed, so that you can bring your children or your other dependents onto this government scheme for a small fee. Because it's bulk, you know, it will work out to be much cheaper than if you had to insure that person on his, by himself or herself, mm -hmm. as the case may be. So that was very important. So that was practically stage one, and that took care of 5,000 persons. Now, in terms of the other areas, we also got some data on the number of persons covered in the private sector, because quite a number of businesses cover their workers for health insurance. And so that was also added to the pool. So in addition to the government workers, you also had quite a number of persons working for private businesses who come under a health scheme in their business as part of the terms and conditions of their employment. Mm -hmm. So when you took all of that into consideration, you were left with about 30 to 35 percent of the population who are not covered by insurance. These would be persons who are probably at the lowest end of the income bracket, persons who still work for institutions that don't cover them for health, mm -hmm maybe some persons who are unemployed and so on. So that number came up to about 30 to 35 percent of the population. So we, be, we then began to target how are we going to cover that 30 to 35 percent of the public? How are we going to cover it? Because you have to come up with some way to cover it. Part of what we're going to do is we're going to look to social services because social services currently provide some form of assistance health-wise for persons who are indigent persons who cannot take care of themselves. We pay for persons to come here to the hospital and the other institutions for coverage who cannot afford to pay for themselves. We buy their drugs, we pay their doctor bills, we do that. And for persons who have to go overseas for treatment, there's a limit right now of 5,000 US dollars per case. Mm. Now, if you have someone who's diagnosed with cancer, for example, you would know that 5,000 US dollars is just a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. And so what's been happening is that in many instances, when you have persons like that, and even in other instances of persons who are in maybe the middle income bracket, if they're not covered by insurance, and some family member becomes diagnosed with cancer, that family may find itself in a worse off position because all of the little savings that they have, mm -hmm. they would then have to put it in to try and help the family member to survive the treatment, which is extremely expensive and getting more expensive with respect to cancer. Mm -hmm. And you have to go overseas, the treatment, and so all of these things, even though the government has an arrangement with Trinidad government to help out in cases like this. Okay. So persons have that option of whether they want to go to Trinidad and in some cases Barbados or some people up to go to the United States where we don't have any arrangement with, with the government itself. I mean, it doesn't have an arrangement. Mm -hmm. And so you would see that it's, it's, it's very important that we as a government find a way to help these people. And that is why we're trying to see how we could bring this health insurance totally into fruition. So we have gone a long way. Now, one of the things we've decided is the, the monies that we would have spent on persons who can provide for themselves through the social services, paying 5,000 US per case and so on, we can take that money as a lump sum and buy an insurance policy to cover those persons. In that way, they would benefit far greater than the 5,000 US dollars because you're trying to get a similar arrangement as you have for government workers. But how would that work? Because usually when you have the, um, the document with an insurance company, it has to have a specific name on it. Mm -hmm. But in these cases, um, 
social services might not necessarily know the name of the person, or would that be done after the person contacts social services? Social services would have the names of the persons. Oh, okay. So what mm -hmm. would happen is that they would have the names of the persons. Mm -hmm. So those persons but what would already I understand, be within the system. No, they're not. They're, they're in the social services system. That's what I'm but asking. But in terms, yes. they're in the social <coughs> services system, mm -hmm. and of course, others can. I mean, anybody who can't help themselves can right. go through the social services okay. and okay. become a part of that list. Mm -hmm. But what would happen, from my understanding, is that you would take out a policy of insurance and understand this can be done mm -hmm. for a blanket number of persons. Oh. If you're saying, for example, that you're, you're covering, um, for example, 200 persons in a year, let's say, could be just call in an arbitrary figure, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you can take out an insurance policy for 500 persons without names. Okay. And okay. you have a, a, an arrangement with the with social services so as fast as someone has to be covered their name would be put on a policy i understand mm -hmm. so i think there's, there's there's something to that effect of what is really going to be done oh, okay. in it so okay. it's, it's it's a real arrangement with mm -hmm. social services <laughs> who would have the data and the names etc mm -hmm. you take out these a number of um you 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 cover mm -hmm. a number without names right whatever that number is, and you mm -hmm. pay the premium mm -hmm. for that number, and then social services as required, would, as required would, 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 names, would put yes. the names to the, mm -hmm. the, the policy okay. as time goes on. Mm, so sounds pretty effective. That is mm -hmm. what we are thinking in terms of covering um, those persons who are indigent. But of course, you still have a category of persons who won't fall into any of these packets. <laughs> and so... We have to find a way to cover them. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are at right now. And I could tell you that very shortly, we'll be coming up with something that would implement, fully implement this health insurance. But this in health is one of the, or the major issue. Because health costs, as you know, as I say, keeps escalating mm -hmm. day by day. The cost of drugs, the cost of service, I think that that is one of the major problems in health that we are tackling and tackling, I would say, very successfully mm -hmm. at this particular point in time. Okay. So tell us a bit more about some of the, the other programs that are offered. Another issue that we've had for some time, it had to do with hemodialysis. Um, we were not able to produce this again because of costs. Fortunately, we are now into a private public sector arrangement and by April this year we will open our hemodialysis unit. We have all the equipment here ready, we have all of the resources here already. The nephrologist, which is the specialist in that area, is on the ground. We also have two nurses trained in hemodialysis. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. those two specialist nurses would be training 30 of our own nurses in that area because, of course, it has to be sustained, and we would want our locals to be trained in that area. So these two nurses, specialist nurses, came in, and they're training 30 of our own nurses in that area. And it's at, it's at the end of that training period that the unit will come into fruition, and we... We estimate that that would be in April this year. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to report mm -hmm. that as of April this year, mm -hmm. we will have our own hemodialysis unit right here at JNF. Oh, and good, that, yes. is, mm -hmm. uh, that is certainly very good news. Okay? okay. One of the things, of course, we do in order to try to get quality service to our citizens in terms of health is constant training constant training of our nurses, constant training of our doctors, constant training because you have to keep up with the latest in the medical technology to offer the best quality service that you can. And we keep that up all the time. Um, last week, we had a graduation of about 18 nursing attendants. This is all part and parcel of the effort to improve the quality of care that we offer to the public. I'm also happy to report that in the last couple of years, you've seen quite a number of our local doctors coming back mm -hmm. here in St. Kitts, and we also have some specialist doctors coming back. 
So we now have a local radiologist and we now have a local orthopedic surgeon. These are specialist um, positions that we always had to bring in people for. But now we have our own local radiologist and we have our own orthopedic surgeon mm -hmm. who have recently come back from, from doing graduate studies. Is there a way for, in a sense, I guess, for the Ministry of Health to let persons who are interested in medicine know that well, these this is a list of areas that we have been there doing is need that. for? We have mm -hmm. been doing that because we have quite a number of doctors who are saying they want to go and specialize in this and that. Mm -hmm. But what we do, we put out a priority list, yes. as you're saying, because mm -hmm. there are certain um, specialties that we really need. So we put out a priority list. So the priority list is there. And we, we inform doctors of the priorities and so the persons who, who want to, to specialize in those areas, we will be always happy to assist them as we do because we set that priority out mm -hmm. based on the needs of the hospital. So that's available at the Ministry of Health? That's available at the Ministry okay. of Health. Sometimes we get some very negative reports coming from persons who especially on radio programs would call in and say they came up here and the service was poor, etc. What I want to say is that we do have some customer service issues like anywhere else. It's no perfect place, but we have also many letters and compliments about the good quality care that people get at JNF. But the world is the way it is, mm -hmm. and so you always hear all of the negative stories. And as a minister, as I said in another place, I want to apologize to anyone who got any poor service here at JNF. But I can assure you that the vast majority of people who come to JNF get quality service. And we won't want to use the one or two um, examples of probably poor service to say that is what is offered at JNF because that is certainly not the case. We can show you many examples of persons both overseas because we cater a lot to people who come off of the boats. As a matter of fact, Many of the boats wouldn't come here if they weren't satisfied with the quality of care that we give here. They come here because part of what you have to produce is that you have a good medical service, a good health care service. So in case anything happens to any of the persons who are here as visitors, they know they can get quality service. And we have gotten many letters from persons who have come here off the boats, visitors and locals who get quality service. So you may have some mishaps here and there as you have anywhere. But generally, JNF and the other institutions or health centers offer quality service and they want to commend our nurses and our doctors for the quality care that they always give to patients whenever they come, whether here at the institution or in the communities. I want to commend them. Are there any particular programs that might be specific to community health since you brought it up in terms of services provided at the health centers? Yes, um, our community health centers really, as you know, routinely they would give um, child, you have a day for, for, for children, you have a day for people from non-communicable diseases, you have a day for people who have mental illness. As we speak as health centers, we'll soon be opening a brand new health center in Old Road. So I know the residents and the nurses who work in community are very anxious and excited. I just visited it. It's really of top class standard. It caters to children, it caters to the disabled. It, it really is a very nice center. It will be opened shortly. But at our health centers, you can get all sorts of services, specific services. We even try to have a day for men at the health centers because as you know all males they tend not to go for their checkups but the whole point of the health center is, is more preventative we give our children our shots there prenatal and postnatal service we also provide pap smears and i want to emphasize that we provide pap smears free of cost and i want the women to take note of this at the health centers so you can get your pap smears done to prevent cervical cancer and so that is also very important to us. In instances where there are particular emergencies, we know that the Ministry of Health also has to cover such things. What, are, what would be some estimate of the cost involved, say for instance, if somebody were to get shot? I'm happy you asked that because again, 
this is one of the areas that is really adding to our high cost of health for the ministry. I want to commend the police because we are not seeing very many cases of late. As a matter of fact, I think the commissioner, one of his men, met me there and said, because they're helping to reduce the health costs, they think we should then do something to budget for them in the police. <laughs> I thought that's not a bad exchange, really. <laughs> but yes, when we were going to these spades in particular, you would note that nearly all of the gunshot victims, no money at all for the treatment, but we have to save their lives because it's human first. We look at human first. And so we did an evaluation at the time as to the cost involved and found that it costs about 3,000 EC dollars per hour to take care of one seriously wounded gunshot victim, whereas to keep the entire journey open for the same hour costs about $2,500. So it was costing us more to keep one seriously wounded gunshot victim alive than it was costing us to keep the entire journey open. Let's touch a bit on chronic illnesses we know that is that's been one of the areas of focus of the ministry of health and we find that one of the root causes of this is obesity which sometimes begins as children it starts when they are children um what are some of the preventative things that the ministry of health has been doing to this end the ministry of health through its health promotion unit we set up screenings all over, especially at big functions, on work sites to take blood pressure and do all these other things to prevent people from getting advanced in whatever illness. So we try to do screenings on a regular basis, invite the public to do these screenings. Of course, you know, it's a choice that people have, and that is we can't take away their choice from them. One of the things we're trying to get really is to get um, a mobile unit to carry out the screenings, but this is voluntary. If we succeed with the mobile unit and we are pressing forward to try and get that, then we can take the screenings house to house to people in the various villages, which is something, and get far more data collected because invariably at the health centers when people show up, they're so advanced in terms of what they suffer and again that adds to the cost mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. health cost and the treatment that they would get for it. So we do a lot of screenings, we also do a lot of education, quite a bit of education we do in the schools and on the radios and so on trying to educate people as to the difficulties and the problems of things like obesity. But again, as one person told me, we can legislate what people should eat. <laughs> and so this is a personal decision that people make. That mm -hmm. is what makes it so very mm -hmm. difficult because people will always eat whatever they want to eat. All right. Is there any other area that you would like to um, conclude with? Well, I just want to conclude where I started because I think this is really an issue to do with the health insurance that we would want the public to debate, to, to become part of the daily um, talk, because we are still trying to get input as to what's the best way to go forward with this. So we're still looking on views as to how it can be, how can we pay for this? So this is really where we want the debate to be, because I said mm -hmm. this is our most critical issue. So as we go forward with it, and I say in the next couple of weeks, you'll hear much more about it because we have our brokers, as I say, coming in to try and finalize some of these arrangements that I spoke to earlier. Mm -hmm. But here's where we really want a lot of debate to be because, as you know, we want nothing more than to have universal coverage, have all of our citizens covered for health costs so that persons who have their little savings, once a family member becomes diagnosed, won't have to go into poverty or to live any less lesser quality of life because you know have to use all of your life savings to help someone who's diagnosed with a catastrophic illness like cancer also we are aware of the 
trauma that family members go through, the emotional stress. And a lot of it comes, yes, from the diagnosis, but also from the fact they are not financially able to pay for the treatment. And so that is why we are so concerned about making sure that people can become a little more comfortable while we ask people to do things to prevent these illnesses from coming <laughs> on. We want to stress that preventative mm -hmm. side as well. At the same time, we are aware that is really people's choice. We hope that they'll choose healthy lifestyles like going on walks, exercising, eating vegetables and you know, not doing so much oils, the fatty foods. We wish that they would do that, but mm -hmm. we have the reality check on us and we see what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. And so we have to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. And so here is where we would want a lot of the debate and the talk to be because we intend to implement a national health insurance so all persons, regardless of who you are, regardless of your income, regardless of where you are in life, we would be able to safely say we are covered, all of our people mm -hmm. in St. Kitts and Nevis for health. Thank you for being on our Ministries in Focus. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for staying with us for Ministries in Focus. This is Alicia Daniel Blake. On behalf of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service, have a pleasant evening. Mm -hmm.